I spy something beginning with um, P. What's happening guys? In today's video, we're going to be building our very own real-time object detection app. We're going to be using React.js and TensorFlow.js to do this. And in order to speed us along the way, we're going to be taking a look at the real-time object detection template that I've set up that you're going to be able to access. Let's take a deeper look as to what we're going to be going through. So in today's video, we're going to be covering three key things. So first up, we're going to be accessing our computer vision template. So this is a template that I've set up for you on GitHub that's going to allow you to kickstart your journey in terms of building your real-time object detection app. We're also going to be setting up and coding with Coco SSD. So for this, we're going to leverage the pre-built TensorFlow.js model. So this is going to allow us to make detections. And then last but not least, we're going to make real-time detections using our app and our webcam. So we'll actually be able to detect different objects within our frame. Let's take a look as to how this is all going to work. So first up, we're going to set up our React.js app. So this is all included inside of the template. So it's pretty easy to set up. Then what we're going to do is capture images from our webcam. So our webcam is going to stream whatever's in that particular frame to our TensorFlow.js model. And then we're going to render those detections to the screen. So you'll be able to see all the different objects that are being captured. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so in order to build our real-time object detection app using React and TensorFlow.js, we're going to be leveraging a couple of things that are going to help us along the way. So first and foremost, I've gone and set up this React computer vision template that's going to allow us to get up to speed a whole heap faster. So we're going to be able to clone this down and build our app from there. We've also got another repo, which is if you don't want to actually go on ahead and code and you just want to download the code and run it from the get-go, you can actually download this link. So this is called the Custom Object Detection React.js TensorFlow Repo. Bit of a mouthful, I know, but everything that you need to actually run this without writing a single line of code is there. In terms of how we've actually gone and built it, we're using React and specifically, we've gone and used the Create React App library to go and do that. And then we're also going to be leveraging TensorFlow.js. And if we go and take a look at the TFJS models, we're specifically going to be using the object detection model. So this model actually uses Coco SSD to allow us to go and perform real-time object detection. Enough blabbing, let's actually get started. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to clone this repo, so the React computer vision template, so we can copy that. And we're going to open up a new command prompt. And in order to clone this repo, we're just going to go into our D drive or a drive that you want to clone this into. And we're just going to type in git clone and then the name of our repository. So if we just minimize that for a second. So basically what we've written is git clone and then the link to our React computer vision template. Now, all the links that I just mentioned, I'm going to make available in the description below. So if you want to pick those up, by all means, just grab them. You'll be able to get started super quick. So let's go on ahead and clone this. Awesome, so that's now cloned. Now, if we open up our D drive, you should have a cloned repository. So let's go on ahead and open that up. So you can see, in fact, we've now got a folder called React Computer Vision Template, and this contains all the code we need to get started. Now, in order to go and build up from this, we're going to open it up inside of an integrated development environment or a coding environment. So in this case, we're going to be using VS Code. So what we'll do is we'll first up go into that directory and then we can open it up using the code dot command. This is only if you're using VS code. So let's CD into it and then we can type in code and then dot and this will open it up inside of VS code. And I'll just bring it onto the right screen and there you go. So inside of this folder, we've got a bunch of stuff. So namely, we've got a CSS file, so app.css. We've got an app.js file and this is where we're going to be doing the majority of our work. We've also got an index.css file and an index.js file. Now, as I mentioned, the majority of our work is going to be inside of our app.js file. But before we actually go on and start making some updates to our code, what we're going to do is just make sure we install our dependencies. So if you select package.json, let's make this a little bit bigger, you're going to be able to see all the dependencies that we've got within our application. Now, in this case, the library that is most important is, or the package that is most important, is the one named tensorflow-models forward slash coco-ssd. So this is the pre-trained coco-ssd model that we're going to be able to leverage from TensorFlow.js. 
Now we've also got TensorFlow.js, we've also got React. We can delete this finger pose one out because that's from a previous code set. And in order to go and install all of these, all we need to do is open up a new terminal. So I can just open one up by hitting Control and the squiggly bracket, I never know what it's called. Uh, on a Mac, it's going to be Command squiggly bracket. And then to go and install this stuff, we're just going to type in npm install and let that run. So this should take a couple of minutes to run, but once it's done, you're going to see a node underscore modules folder pop up. So we'll be right back in a second. Alrighty, so you can see that all of our packages have installed and we're back at our regular command line. Now what we're going to go and do is start making our updates to our app.js file. So if you actually take a look at this, so let's just make this a little bit smaller, you can see that we've got a bunch of to-dos. Now I've specifically called this out because it's basically going to walk you through the steps that you need to update in order to use this. But likewise, if you wanted to use this for other use cases, you could do that as well. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to go through steps one, two, three, four, and five. And then by the time we've got through each one of those steps, we should effectively have a real-time object detection React app. So the first thing that we need to do is import the required model here. Now the model that we're actually going to need is actually coming out of our Coco SSD package. So let's go on ahead and import that model first up. Alrighty, so that's our first dependency imported. So the line that we've just written there is import star as Coco SSD from at tensorflow-models forward slash Coco SSD. So this basically is allowing us to download our pre-trained TensorFlow.js model. The next thing that we need to do is actually import our drawing utility, but we're going to hold off on that until the end because the last thing that we want to do is draw. Now the next thing that we would need to do is actually go on ahead and load our network into our model. So let's go on ahead and do that. Okay, so that's our model loaded. So in order to do that, we've created a new variable called net. And then we've made this because our function is asynchronous, we're just waiting for that to load. So here we're actually loading our Coco SSD model and this is what we imported right up here. And then we're using the load method to actually go on ahead and bring it in. Now, if we go to step four, the next thing that we wanna do is actually start making some detections. So really quickly, we're already up to making some detections. So let's go on ahead and start doing that. So once we get these detections, we're going to be able to start our application and actually log these out. So we'll actually be able to see how our model is actually performing. Alrighty, so that's the line of code that we need to actually make our detections. So basically what we're doing here is we're creating a new variable called obj or object, and we're using our network that we defined up here. So we're actually passing it through to this detect function. So we're using that network and we're passing through our video. So this is the video from our webcam and we're passing that to our detect function. So ideally we should be able to detect a bunch of objects. Then what we're doing is we're console logging that out. So we should be able to see the output of each one of these detections in our console. Now what we need to do is actually start up our app. So this is going to allow us to see our objects and whether or not our model is actually performing well. So to start our app, we just need to type in npm start. And this is going to start our React app and open up a new browser. So you can see it's open up a new browser and it's gone directly to localhost 3000. So by default, this is where our React app is going to start. So let's give that a couple of seconds while it compiles. And then ideally we should be able to see a couple of detections in our console. All right, so you can see that we've got our camera showing up on the screen. Now, if we go and inspect our console, and if we open that up, you can see we're getting a bunch of detections here. And if we open this up, you can see that in fact, we're making detections. So we've got a couple of things showing here. So we've got an array and inside of our array, we've got a B box. This represents our bounding box. And each one of these represents a specific thing. So this is our X coordinate. This is our Y coordinate. And this is our box width and our box height. We can also see our different classes. So in this case, you can see the class as person because it's detecting me and we can also see our score. But at the moment, we're not actually drawing anything to the screen. So let's stop our app and actually finish our drawing function so we'll actually be able to see our results. Okay, so the last two things that we needed to do were update our drawing utility and bring it in right up here. So let's go on ahead and do that. Now to start building our drawing utility, we're just going to right click on source, create a new file and call that utilities. 
index.js. And in here, we're going to define a function that's going to allow us to draw to the screen. So this function is going to be called draw rect, short for draw rectangle. And it's going to allow us to pass our predictions to this function and draw them to our actual webcam screen or to our webcam canvas. So let's go on ahead and start doing that. Okay, so we're going to start setting up our function. And remember, our function is going to be called draw rect. Alrighty, so to our draw rect function, we're going to be passing our detections. And if you actually take a look, this is actually going to be our object variable here. And we're also going to pass through our canvas. So this is going to be our canvas that we've already had predefined. What we're then going to do is loop through each one of our detections using the for each function. So let's do that. So the first thing that we're actually doing within our draw rect function is we're going and grabbing our x variable, our y variable, our width and our height. So remember when we were console logging out our predictions, we were able to see our class and our text. These are exactly the same variables here. We're just extracting them out now. We're also extracting our class. So in this case, it was going to be person from our last prediction. Now the next thing that we want to do is set up some styling and actually go on ahead and draw our rectangles. So let's power through that. Okay, so we've finished up our code. Now what we've gone and done is we've first up set our styling. So there we've created a new variable called color and this is going to hold the color of our box as well as the color of our text. And we've also gone and set, this is, should actually be stroke style. So let's go and change that. And we've set that to color. We've also set our fill style to color and we've also set our font. So in this case, it's going to be 18 pixels and Arial. Then what we've gone and done is we've gone and drawn our rectangles and text. So we've used our canvas and we've commenced our path. We've then used the fill text method. And to that, we've passed the text that we've extracted from our prediction, as well as the X and Y coordinates in terms of their placement. And then we're drawing our rectangle as well. So to that, we're passing our X variable, our Y variable, our width and our height. So this should ideally draw a rectangle around each one of our predictions. And then last but not least, we're drawing our stroke. So this is going to actually apply it to the screen. So we can save this now. And then all we need to do is bring this into our app.js file and run it for each prediction. So let's go on ahead and do that. So right up here on step two, we can bring in our draw rect function. So that's our draw rect function imported. Now what we need to do is just run it down here. So in step five, we just need to use our draw rect function and pass through our object. So these were all of our individual predictions and pass through our canvas. So if we save that now, ideally what should happen is if we go back to our browser, we should be able to see our detection. So you can see it's right up in the top screen, but you can see that we're actually drawing our box. Now if we adjust our camera a little bit and take this down, you can see that we're making a whole bunch of detections. So we're detecting myself as a person, the couch. We're also detecting the chair. Pretty cool, right? Now, if we got some other stuff, I don't actually have my phone on me, but maybe if we tried out our bottle, let's say in cup, bottle, there you go. So you can see that we're doing, we're creating real-time detections using our webcam and using our pre-built TensorFlow.js model. Now, what we could do as well, if we wanted to make this a little bit fancier or go and make detections in party mode, we could do that as well. So let's go on ahead and do that. So now what we need to do is we basically just need to update our drawing function. So what we can do here is just go back into utilities.js and then rather than just automatically setting our color to green, we're going to do a little bit of magic to make this a little bit more party mode. So let's go on ahead and define this. So rather than our color just being green, we're going to change it to pound sign and then plus. And if we save it now and go back to our app, 
you can see that our detections are now appearing in party modes. Our person is flashing. And if we go and use our bottle, you can see we're getting detections in party mode. And that about wraps it up. So we've gone through quite a fair bit. Now, if we go back and take a look at our app, we went through our importing of our model. We created our draw rect function and imported it there. We loaded up our neural network. Then we made our detections and we also drew it to our canvas. And that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I'm releasing new videos. Let me know what you think of my mo and also let me know how you went about building your real-time object detection app. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.